All right, so welcome back to the channel. Didn't make much money today, 66 bucks, no big deal. Just year to date right now, we're doing decent. Been trying to save some money and try to have the cash ready for the 15th and the 16th before Powell speaks. So I sold out of all the positions. The market's been very bullish. This is the inverse of, of the NASDAQ. So as you can see, it's really sold off big time. I mean, it was like selling at 47. But, you know, I was trading QQQ and it's showing signs of momentum, but I just don't trust it. So I had shares at 332, but I, I sold and it took all day from 9 a.m. all the way to three just to get up two, three points. I just don't trust it. I don't know what's going to happen. But if you look at the six month, you can see that the 200 EMA is 359. Could be a buying opportunity, personally, I don't know. So I'm playing it safe, I'm sitting on cash. You know, I added my gains to the, obviously we're done with the FDRV, I'm adding to the FSSNX, and I'll show those at the end of the video. Just my positions. Uh, we gotta just see what happens with how much they're actually gonna increase the rates in March 15th and, and the 16th. I believe Powell's supposed to make a decision on that. So if he does, we're going to see a lot of volatility in the market. So I'd rather be sitting on cash. And if I have to buy higher because the market likes it, I'm OK with that. I just don't want to have a position and it keeps selling off. Because if you look at the Nasdaq over the six months, you can see that it, it tipped up 400 twice and then it just sold off. You know, And I'm glad I don't have any shares up here. I don't even have shares of the Nasdaq because I keep buying and selling them. But it hit lows here of 318, and then it tested again at 319 and popped back up 20 points. So it still is bearish. And if you're looking at these green, orange, and red lines, this green is the 200 EMA. And to show bullishness, it has to sustain past this 200 EMA at 360. Right here, you see 359.88. And the orange is your 20 EMA, which it didn't even get to. That's 342, and it failed earlier here, which was in, in March 3rd. And then right here is the 9 EMA, which it failed right here, as you can see. Look, it's stuck at 334. And if you look at the 335.7, that is your 9 EMA. So that's why I'm not holding shares. If it breaks it, it breaks it, but I just don't trust it. I want to wait and see what the news that's coming out because it's... March 9th, and we have to wait and see what he's going to say about the Fed rates. And it could be good news. It could turn it around, but I don't want to have shares to find out. If you're going to take take a position, do like 10% of your original position that you wanted because it's just too risky. You don't know where it's going to go. And why bag hold if you don't have to? This is not proven to show any signs of support. There's no support levels right here. The only thing we're going off of is this. We go all the way across and we can see that it had support in this area around the 320s. But if it breaks the 320s, we're headed over here, which is 300s. So we really don't have a support level. Now, like watch this, if you go and do a two year outlook on this thing, so this is a two year chart we're looking at now, where's your support level? Your support level is 291. Now you don't wanna have shares at 300 and then it sells off. So I'm keeping my ammo ready, ready to go locked and loaded because here's a support level, there's a support level and there's a support level. And that right there shows 291, I'm looking right here. Or you can just use this purple line. And this is using the trade armor on Fidelity Active Trader Pro. And it gives you a support level, which gives you a good idea of where you'd buy. Personally, I think QQQ is going to test 300. And I think that's a good time to start taking a long-term position. I've been, I want to build a position in NASDAQ, but I just don't trust it yet. So I've been putting my gains into like other things like, you know, FDRV, which is not working out well because it's just selling off completely. And this small cap index fund, FSSNX, which I'm trying to show really quick right here, which I'm putting it, I put it, I think I have like 1600 bucks or something or $1,700 into it. I'll post it at the end. I don't remember what it was because it, it's all gains. So I don't really care what happens to it. I'm just going to let it just sit long term. So it doesn't matter in the end because I'll just keep adding to it. But yeah, so I'm adding to that. And then I'm, I added, this is like, this is the worst. I, I, was, I was always constantly trying to, buy this, I, I've been buying this electric vehicle fund and it has just sold off. I have a average price of like $25, I have $10,000 invested, so I have about 400 shares. And it's just sold off big time. I mean, it's sitting at $22. And unless Biden is gonna push the electric vehicles and anything that's energy, this thing's gonna keep, continue to sell off. But we're holding it long term, so it is what it is. We just let sit and watch it. But the big thing to watch really is triple is Q, 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 which is NASDAQ. 
And we need to see where it's gonna go. It's trading below the 200, the nine, and the 20 and the nine. And let's wait until March 15th and 16th because it's gonna get volatile and it might sell off more. So you just wanna be careful. We don't know where it's gonna go. It might hold these spots, who knows? But I don't wanna be having a position to find out. I think it's just smart to just look at the overall picture and realize that this has not reversed just because you have one good green day. It doesn't show signs of reversal. And you just have to be very selective and know where you want to go when you're buying this. So that's really all I got. I don't have many trades lately. I haven't traded too much. You know, I'm, I'm still holding my gains for the year, which is nice. But I would like to see this number. I want to get this number much higher. But we have to be selective with when we're going to buy and always just go for quick gains and just try to make the gains as you go. And as you look through, you can see, let me just see if I can scroll this down a little bit. When you look at my overall P&L, the biggest thing you notice is you see a lot of green, obviously, but what's the biggest thing? My losses are limited. Look at AMC, 261, SQQ, $615. I have kept my losses to a minimum. And that's the key, is cutting your losses early so you don't have huge losses. Because if you have big losses, it's gonna ruin your overall P&L. So that's the biggest thing. If you're wrong, cut that loss, you could always try to do it, buy it back lower. I mean, look at the net, look at QQQ as a great example of the last 10 days. I had shares at 332. I don't know why this looks so weird. Hold on, let me fix this. I had shares at 332. And if you look at the one month time frame. If you would have held up here in the 340s and didn't cut your loss, you know, down here, sold all the way down to 318, you're missing these opportunities to ride up. So sometimes you just got to cut the loss and you can buy lower and then hold it for the gains coming up. So definitely something to think about. Just wanted to bring it up. Um, there's traders that do much better than me, but you know what, if I'm doing, if I'm positive, that makes me happy. And then just keep trying to make small gains and just keep adding them to index funds that you truly enjoy and that you believe that will last long term. That's really all I got for you. I, I haven't really traded on individual stocks. I've been mainly just trading the NASDAQ because it's so it just sold off so much that I believe that eventually you're gonna get a nice bull run, but it just might take some time. But Amazon's doing the form in the double bottom right here at 2,700. I think Apple is selling off a little bit. Apple's at 162, so we really can't look at them too much. This is a six month chart and they're, you know, they're trading at 140s, but they're still trading above the 200 EMA. So still bullish. So, and I just wanna see where Tesla is because Tesla's killing my FDRV fund. Yeah, like they're trading at 860. I need them back at like 1200 for FDRV to go back up to like $30. So this is, this is what you're looking at. You got the three big guys that aren't trading the best and we're gonna to have to wait and see what happens with the Fed. Once the Fed makes that decision, it's definitely time to, you know, if it looks bullish, step on the gas. But you can't make any decisions before that. And I don't like playing that, trying to hold into news. I'd rather just give me whatever the market's going to tell me. So I don't like to hold into earnings. And I don't, I sure as hell don't like to hold into, you know, a big decision like inflation rates. Because the market, when it has a reaction, it tends to overreact. So if it's selling off, it's gonna sell off a lot. It's probably gonna hit that area that we talked about around 300 to 290 would be next support level for QQQ, which you can see on the two, the two year chart, which is right here. So you just wanna be very careful. So something to keep an eye out. If it looks bullish, we will definitely ride the momentum because that's what we wanna do. We're always, we always wanna go long, but you just have to be aware and just be cautious and protect your assets. You know, the, your long-term holds, who really cares? But if you're day trading, you wanna make sure you're protecting your capital to try to make gains and get in and out. Because as you can see, most stocks that are NASDAQ or just growth stocks have just died off completely. That's really all I got for you. So until the next video.